Brown veterinarian Sandy Stitchin, assistant professor with the University of Wisconsin Extension. Hi, I'm Sarah Melsoy, veterinarian and assistant professor with the University of Wisconsin Extension. Hi, I'm Luke Peterson, veterinarian and animal science instructor at North Central Technical College, Agriculture Center of Excellence. Hi. I'm Dr. Heather Slusser, Assistant Professor of the University of Wisconsin. We are producing this video as educational partners to help increase your understanding of the importance of using pain mitigation when dehorning dairy calves. We will demonstrate the steps involved with reducing the pain of dehorning. Prescription drug products are being used in the production of this video. Therefore, this video is designed to be used in conjunction with your farm's veterinarian. We encourage you to watch this video with your veterinarian and use the University of Wisconsin Extension fact sheet, Disbudding Dehorning Dairy Calves, as you develop your on-farm dehorning protocol. As referenced in the Hordes Dairy Mint issue dated April 8, 2013, dehorning is necessary, but so are solutions to make it less painful. As producers, we have an ethical responsibility to protect, practice humane techniques during procedures which involve animals including dehorning calves. It is our hope this video provides you with the appropriate pain mitigation techniques when dehorning calves. Humane dehorning is a simple matter to learn and practice. In the past, it was believed the production characteristics of horned cattle were intrinsically superior to those of pulled cattle, and therefore a characteristic to be dealt with. More recent analysis, however, acknowledges that polled individuals have existed in cattle populations throughout recorded history. Polled genes in Boss Taurus have a simple inheritance and are apparently not linked to production performance. Many artificial insemination companies now offer polled dairy genetics, primarily Holstein. In terms of pain management, polled genetics is the best method for horn removal because there is no pain associated with genetically preventing horns in animals. Having horns is determined by one pair of genes. A pair of genes confers the genetic trait of horns, with one gene inherited from the dam and the other inherited from the sire. The pulled gene is dominant to the horn gene. The calf will be pulled when the calf inherits a single pulled gene from either parent. Since pulledness is a genetic trait, when you include pulledness in your genetic selection process, you will reduce and eventually eliminate the need to humanely dehorn in your herd. Removing horns prevents injuries to people and cattle. Horns are the single major cause of carcass wastage due to bruising. Trim associated with bruising from horned cattle carcasses is twice that of hornless carcasses. Cattle with horns generally incur financial penalties at the market. Dehorned cattle require less feeding space, are easier and less dangerous to handle and transport and pose a reduced risk of injury to udders, flanks, and eyes of other cattle. Cattle without horns exhibit fewer aggressive behaviors associated with individual dominance. The pain of dehorning calves can be minimized, especially when calves are disbudded or dehorned at an early age. If you can see the horn bud, then it is time to disbud or dehorn. Dehorning before six weeks of age. Horns are adaptations of the skin. They begin as germinal tissue or buds within the skin and grow out from the corium, which is located below the skin. If the horn bud, but not the corium, is removed, the horn will resume growing. Therefore, you need to remove both the horn bud and the corium to prevent regrowth of the horn after disbudding. At approximately two months of age, the horn becomes attached to the periosteum of the frontal bone overlying the frontal sinus. As a horn grows, the frontal sinus extends upwards into the center of the horn. You will see this extension of the frontal sinus when you remove horns of older animals because there will be a voided area or space when the center of the horn and extending downwards into the frontal bone. When we dehorn calves before six weeks of age, we avoid this extension of the frontal sinus. Disbudding is the process of removing the bud before it becomes a horn attached to the frontal bone of the young animal. This technique is much easier for both the handler and the calf. Removing the bud is a bloodless procedure and is associated with less chronic pain. 
We recognize pain in cattle by watching their behavior. Post-procedural behavioral indicators of pain include head rubbing, head shaking, neck extension, ear flicking, tail flicking, lying and rising, and then decreased feed intake or reduced rumination in older animals. Hot iron disbudding or cautery demonstrated in this video is very common, reliable, and painful for the animal. Electric and butane disbudding devices are readily available on the market. The application of heat may create less distress because pain receptors are destroyed by heat and pain perception is consequently reduced. Applying excessive heat, however, can damage underlying bone and cause thermal heat burns. Disbudding may also be achieved with the use of caustic materials applied to the hornbud. It is recommended that caustic paste be used during the first three days of a calf's life. The drawbacks to using this technique are the potential for incomplete disbudding, which would require dehorning at a later age, and or damage to surrounding skin or eyes if the chemical runoff occurs. While not demonstrated in this video, we refer you to the University of Wisconsin Extension Fact Sheet, Disbudding and Dehorning Dairy Calves, for the steps involved with using caustic paste. Dehorning is removal of the horns after they have formed from the horn bud and are now attached to the frontal bone. Gouge dehorning using scoops, knives, shears, dehorning spoons, cups, or tubes are used at this stage of horn growth to remove the horn. To remove the corium and prevent horn regrowth, a complete ring of hair surrounding the horn must be removed in the process. Dehorning large horns on older animals may lead to sinusitis, an infection of the sinus cavity, bleeding, prolonged wound healing, and infection. Sometimes large horns of adult cattle are just tipped so as to remove the horn end but leave the base of the horn. Placement of high tension elastic rubber bands around the base of the horn is not recommended as pain studies show significant changes in attitude, gait and posture, and increased time spent lying down when compared to mechanically dehorned or tipped cattle. Tetanus has been reported in cattle after dehorning. Check with your veterinarian if tetanus prophylaxis should be used. Bovine cutaneous papilloma, warts, have also developed due to physical transmission of the virus by improperly disinfected equipment. Gouge dehorning has the potential to spread bovine leukosis virus due to the physical transfer of infected blood by the dehorning device. In this video include a halter to restrain calves for administration of a sedative, a 1cc syringe and xylazine for chemical restraint and sedation of the calves. An electric shaver with a number 10 blade is used to clip the hair around the horn bud. Cytokine is administered locally to provide a corneal nerve block to numb the horn bud for the disbudding procedure. A hot iron dehorner to apply heat to the horn bud. Meloxicam tablets are a non steroidal anti inflammatory crushed in a pill crusher and administered to calves and milk replacer to provide long term pain mitigation. To begin the disbudding process, first properly restrain the calf's head using a halter or head restraint. Select a hot iron device with a diameter just larger than the base of the bud. As the device is preheating, remember to keep it away from combustible materials. Clip the hair away from the horn bud to improve visualization of the horn bud and reduce the amount of hair burnt by the device. Clipping a 2-3 to three centimeter area around the base of the horn is essential if dehorning paste is being used. Removing the hair is helpful with any dehorning method to prevent hair from matting at the dehorning site and to reduce the risk of infection. Sedation is optional, but it can make restraint and local nerve block placement easier. As you can see, we are sedating this calf using xylazine, a prescription product, which results in a four-day meat withdrawal. It takes five to ten minutes after administration for adequate sedation. The calf will lie down and must be kept in sternal recumbency to prevent aspiration pneumonia. Always observe sedated animals closely until they are able to stand. Another prescription drug, tolazine, can be used to re reverse the xylazine. When using these drugs, it is necessary for you to consult your veterinarian through the context of the VCPR, or Veterinarian Client Patient Relationship, to ensure proper dose and use. Sedation alone does not reduce the cortisol-slash-stress or pain response to hot iron disbudding, 
Local anesthesia utilizing a corneal nerve block is the pain mitigation step needed to reduce the pain and discomfort associated with hot iron disbudding. The corneal nerve is a branch of the trigeminal nerve or cranial nerve 5. It provides sensation to the skin of the horn and horn bud region. Injecting local anesthetic around the corneal nerve as it crosses the frontal crest will numb the horn bud. Halfway between the lateral or outside aspect of the eye and the base of the horn bud just below the bony ridge formed by the frontal bone. Palpate the ridge between the eye and the horn bud and locate the area halfway between. A subcutaneous injection of lidocaine, a prescription anesthetic, is placed below the frontal ridge halfway between the eye and the horn. Using lidocaine will result in a four-day meat withdrawal. Consult your veterinarian through the context of the valid client-patient relationship to ensure proper placement and dosage. Pain control by the nerve block is almost immediate if given in or next to the corneal nerve. Once the bud area is numb, apply the appropriately sized dehorning tool over the horn bud. Apply forth for 5 to 7 seconds. After heat application, there will be a 2 to 3 millimeter red ring around the entire horn bud. There is little chance of regrowth when the cauterized bud is loose or movable when touched following the procedure. The horn bud will slough off in 4 to 6 weeks. Injection of local anesthesia prior to the application of caustic paste does not prevent the pain of the paste. Since the caustic paste has a basic pH, it negatively affects the action of the lidocaine. Local anesthesia abolishes the indicators of pain for the duration of its action. Therefore, after it has been metabolized, calves will display behavioral changes similar to those of calves dehorned without using local anesthesia. This behavior may include head rubbing, head shaking, neck extension, ear flicking, tail flicking, lying and rising, and decreased feed intake. Decreased average daily gain following the procedure may be reduced by compensatory gain later. You have probably heard some say calves will get over it, but while they are getting over it, their body is expending energy to heal the site and their immune system is not functioning as good as it could be to protect them from disease, thus making them more vulnerable. Mitigating the painful effects of disbudding and dehorning supports the calf's feeding behavior and immune system function. Administration of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, provides prolonged post-operative analgesia. Veterinary NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, available today such as flunixin or aspirin, do not however provide long periods of pain relief, necessitating redosing. At this current time, there are no veterinary NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, labeled for pain relief in animals. Talk to your veterinarian about pain management and the use of human non-steroidal anti-inflammatories such as meloxicam. Using oral meloxicam results in a 21-day meat withdrawal and is prescribed as an extra-labeled drug, which is only available with a valid client-patient relationship. Minimizing pain associated with disbudding and dehorning is important to limit the pain-stress-distress cascade that creates altered behavior and physiological states. Preemptive analgesia can be accomplished with sedation, local anesthesia, and pre- and post-operative administration of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, including poldness in selection indexes and long-term breeding strategies has the potential to reduce and eventually eliminate the need to dehorn. Thank you to the CAMS of the Agriculture Center for Excellence, North Central Technical College, Wausau, and their veterinarian, Dr. Luke Peterson, for helping to make this video possible. This video has been developed and produced by agriculture educators Sandy Stitchin, Sarah Mills Lloyd, and Heather Slusher of the University of Wisconsin Extension on January 13, 2015. Copyright protection is afforded by the 2015 Board of Regents of the University of Wisconsin System doing business as the Division of Cooperative Extension of the University of Wisconsin Extension.